Okay, so uh, today is also the birthday of St. Nicholas, the 15th of March. Traditionally, his birthday is on this day. And I'll show buildings built for St. Nicholas. Uh, he was born on the 15th of March, 2000, uh, 270, and he died um, in, uh, in, on the 6th of December. But uh, now I have another problem, okay. Uh, so, I, uh, well, I read again, St. Nicholas of Mira, also known as Nicholas of Bari, was an early Christian bishop of Greek, Greek descent from the maritime city of Mira in Asia Minor. Now it's part of Turkey. During the time of the Roman Empire, because of the many miracles attributed to his intercession, he's also known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker. St. Nicholas is the patron saint of sailors, merchants, archers, repentant thieves, prostitutes, children, brewers, bone brokers, unmarried people, and students in various cities and countries around the world. As I said, he seems to be the patron saint of everybody. His reputation evolved among the faithful as was common for early Christian saints, and his legendary habit of secret gift giving gave rise to the traditional model of Santa Claus, Saint Nick through Sinter class. Anyway, here he is in one illuminated uh, manuscript. Uh, another picture probably, I mean, most surely from the Orthodox um, uh, tradition. Uh, this is <laughs> welcome to modernity, but who knows, maybe such an image would have been possible in uh, all the times as well. Uh, here he is bringing uh, gifts to everybody with a, a reddish nose and reddish cheeks, uh, bringing joy to so many people who leave their shoes, uh, you know, at the entrance of the apartments or houses over the night. Basilica di San Nicola in Bari, in Italy, uh, I think uh, this is where he was, uh, because I understood he was... Uh, I'm a little bit confused. This is in Italy, but um, it's associated with Bari. I forgot exactly what I myself actually read. Anyway, this this building is uh, is, um, is dedicated to him, to Saint Nicholas in Bari in Italy. Uh, maybe his uh, you know his uh, his grave is here, you know his tomb. It's. It's an old, uh, an old church in Bari in Italy. I don't know the significance of this chair. I used to know maybe it's, it's a chair associated with him. He was a bishop after all. Um, but I, we concentrate on the architecture. Nicolae de Mira, well, it's on Nicolae, Nicolas de Mira. This was, uh, you know, his, uh, his, uh, this is the naming, uh, his naming in, 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 in Romanian too. Saint Nicholas, how a bishop born in Asia Minor be become the modern day Santa Claus. Saint Nicholas was renowned for his secret gift giving, which has given rise to the figure known as Santa Claus, not only Orthodox Christians, but also Anglicans, Lutherans, and Catholics revere him and he was be he has become the patron saint of sailors, merchants, children, and repentant thieves. Well, certain people were, or professions were excluded from this other text. The St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church is today located on the site of the cave in Vaitejala where he resided. And the text written by Nicholas is kept by the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem. This is, I love this building. I mean, you know, maybe because of the prestige of, of age, of old age, but it's so authentic, you know, and, and uh, I love authenticity in whatever it's for. St. Nicholas Church in Demre, Tur Turkey, where he was actually born. Um, even here, there are splendid things, you know, this, this is almost like, a, I mean, you know, it looks in a way modern, but it's not modern. Uh, and the building, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, what can I say? It's in Turkey. Turkey, which is not an Orthodox uh, Christian country, but, uh, you know, they have, you know, uh, uh, not just this building, of course, um, they have great uh, 
uh, you know, Christian structures. I do, I go rather quickly because we have about 200 images and I want to arrive at the modern buildings dedicated to St. Nicholas because there are a few very interesting. Um, I, I actually think it's worthy of, to, of contemplating uh, churches uh, built for a specific uh, saint, in this case, uh, St. Nicholas. Um, Now, uh, I don't know why I placed this. I, I made this presentation two years ago. That is the YouTube, it's a video, I guess, but um, I don't know exactly. Maybe it's, it's, it's showing the building that I previously uh, showed. I love these details on the pavement. Uh, you know, it's, 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 they are beautiful, you know, and they show again the ornamental need uh, and, uh, you know, the, what can I say? I, I wish we would pay attention to the to the below and to the above, just as the ancients did. You know, usually we ignore. Uh, you know, we just think of, of, of buying or, or you know acquiring a rug, and uh, that's it. But there were no. I mean, you know, there were rugs, of course, at that time, but they worked on the and not just on the on the pavement, on the surface you walk, but also on the ceiling. There was a concern for uh, the below and the above. St. Nicholas Wooden Church in Moscow. Uh, maybe we should send a letter to Mr. Putin and ask him to pay a visit to this church and uh, stop the deadly, um, uh, you know, actions, which are uh, totally unacceptable. It, it, it's, it's just, I don't understand. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And this church is interesting, a wooden church, but it's, it's um, you know, engaging aesthetically. Or St. Nicholas. I wonder what he would feel if a bomb fell on this church or on some other churches around the Kremlin and so on. You know, uh, maybe then he would realize what he does to Kiev or, uh, you know, other, other cities and other parts of Ukraine. St. Nicholas Church in Bucharest. This is also a nice building and it's not far away from the University of Architecture. I don't know if it's still the, during uh, repair works or, uh, you know, I have seen it a few years like this, but it's a fine building. And um, what can we say? Bucharest has some jewels um, which have to be acknowledged. So this is also for St. Nicholas. It's Russia, it's a Russian church. I wonder Mr. Putin is looking up to see uh, God or Jesus look back to him, you know. This man is killing, is killing other human beings, is killing children, mothers, fathers, grandparents newborns, not yet borns, he's killing them. He is killing them. I hope I won't disappear because the, the lady, I, I wrote the text, uh, House for a Courageous Woman apparently disappeared. I just read that she disappeared. Well, <laughs> I hope I won't disappear. Or if I disappear, you know why I disappeared because I wrote the text and I did send it to a number of people. I don't know what this is going on. You know, it's it's Bucharest. It's what can we say? It's Eastern Europe. Is uh, are they repairing it here? But why is this ladder here? Anyway, yeah, it's actually nice. I like it. It should be kept there. 
Anyway, St. Nicholas Church in Bucharest, moving forward. But Biserica Sfântul Nicolae din Densuș, the church of St. Nicholas in Densuș, another beautiful building in Romania. I, really, I always like this building. You know, it's, it's partly, you know, damaged by the passage of time, but I think it's, it's still impressive. It's a great building, it really is. Even the ruin part is fine. It's, I, I don't want to sound cynical, but I think it's a, it's a genuine piece of architecture and we should be proud that we have it. Then Sush. Say Nicholas again. Now, the Irish 19th century church goes on the market for $190. I, I came across this um, announcement. This is the church which was selling for $190. Can you believe it? Yes, uh, I read it actually in Great Britain, uh, about two churches a year are desacralized and you know, uh, used for other functions. But maybe it's better to do this than to hypocritically preach, uh, you know, things you don't believe in, in the name of a dogmatic God. Maybe it's preferable to do what uh, Dan Hanganu did in Canada, to transform a church into a library or into a theater, as he did. St. Nicholas Church in uh, Bogdana, Bogdana, part of the Bogdana convent in Rădăuți, Romania. Nice. Uh, St. Nicholas Church in Bacău, the newer building. Uh, St. Nicholas Church in Dorohoi. I, okay, you could say I became patriotic, but I did find uh, quite a number of churches built in Romania for St. Nicholas. Now, this is a monument to the destruction of Hamburg. It was a big St. Nicholas Church in Hamburg in Germany, and it's still impressive. It was bombed, uh, but uh, even as a fragment, it's, it's quite impressive. And it was kept like this in order to, you know, in order for uh, Mr. Putin to think twice about bombing, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, European territory. But he is not. He is not stopping. He is not this man, or maybe, maybe he will be. I hope he will be, but it will be too late. You know, this human being is crying. Why is he crying? Because of the horrors of war. That's why he is crying. And we learn nothing. This is incredible. Look, this man is, is sitting on a pile of broken bricks. When do we learn nothing? Biserica Sfântul Nicolae, Curtea de Argeș, um, again, Romania. The truth is, some of these older, older churches are quite nice. And uh, I love their thick walls. Uh, and you know the the, the domes and the, there is a, there is a, 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 you know a genuineness here, and I like the mystery, the darkness. Uh, you know I, I I love Andrea Palladio, but I think the churches of Andrea Palladio don't have the the mystery of of such an interior. They are too white, and in a way, I don't know. Maybe I have an orthodox sensibility. It's possible. St. Nicholas sent a center uh, in Trozin, what St. Nicholas in one day, uh, again, Romania in Bucharest. Um, St. Nicholas center in uh, Mihai Poda Monastery. Uh, another one, Boteanu Church, St. Nicholas in, uh, in Bucharest again. Plenty, a very, a very uh, popular saint indeed.
Now in Prague, St. Nicholas Church in Prague, a different kind of church, of course, very opulent, very rich, very baroque. Prague has uh, great buildings, it's true. Uh, and, uh, you know, the baroque uh, is always uh, exalting. Prague. Proud, a proud church. Dedicated to St. Nicholas again. Prague had a chance which Dresden and Hamburg didn't, that it was not bombed. So, you know, uh, all these riches were kept alive. Now uh, in France, Eglise Saint Nicolas in Blois. I always like the Baroque in, in the case of, um, you know, sacred architecture. That, that kind of richness uh, is in, in, inducive for uh, exaltation. More austere, yes, you could say the spirit uh, could, uh, could uh, receive wings from austerity, but it depends what kind of austerity. This one seems to be a little cold, although the Western facade, it's okay, I guess. Uh, but I'm contradicting myself because the liturgical space at La Tourette by Le Corbusier is extremely austere and extremely inspiring and exalting. Anyway, this I, I, I like the building in the old picture. Yes, in Blois, Exil Saint Nicolas, Eglise Saint Nicolas, uh, somehow, but it's, it's, it's nice, the picture, the old picture. And here is nice because there are no chairs. And for a viewer, uh, you know, looking uh, onto a screen, uh, the screen of a laptop, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's comfortable. But if you are there, it's less comfortable, but you realize more the spirit of, of the house of God if there are no chairs, I think, or benches. So this is in Blois in France. So Saint Nicolas Eglise in Nancy in France. Um, Saint Nicolas de Port. Saint Nicolas Church in Kenilworth. I love these uh, old uh, rural churches in England, or not, on, not, on, not only in England. You know, they. Uh, they, they are romantic, I think, like uh, the church in Densush. St. Nicholas Church in Meran. Uh, I don't know what this, where Meran is. Uh, anyway, moving forward, I want to arrive at, the, at some modernities, at the modern buildings. One of them in particular is exceptional, I think. <clears throat> Uh, of an architect who became uh, the mayor of that city. And, uh, you know, this is not very common. Uh, Kirche in St. Nicolaus in Essen, in Germany. Now, I read that uh, parking lots in the United States cover 5% of the, uh, of the country. So the United States <laughs> dedicated 5% of his territory, its territory to parking lots. Well, I wonder how much of the surface of Europe is dedicated to churches, because we see so many churches. On the other hand, uh, the United States has not, on, not only parking lots, but also churches. I read, and I still don't believe what I read, and I have to double check, but if my memory is good, and if what I read was correct, uh, just Brooklyn, New York has 11,000 churches, 11,000 churches just in Brooklyn. So uh, maybe they win the fight even with the parking lots. St. Nicholas Church in, you read it, I can't, I can only, no, I can't. Um, interesting church, very monumental. 
uh, and uh, kind of a modernistic Gothic. It almost look like, looks like a building by Fritz Höger. I like it. It's, uh, it's uh, stringent. Yeah, this was probably built at the beginning of the 20th century. An austere Gothic, very monumental. Now, Santiago Calatrava, who is not a Christian, but he, he built the St. Nicholas Church in New York City, you know, very close to the site of the World Trade Center disaster or tragedy. This is uh, the model, and here it is during the construction. So it seems even the Greek, the, the Orthodox Church is open to collaborating with, uh, you know, so-called uh, modern, even in a way, avant-garde architects. Um, so, you know, I guess dogma is not as rigid as some, some people might think. Here it is still uh, during construction. I don't know if it was finalized. I searched last year for, you know, latest pictures and I couldn't find them. Yes, the interior does tell you that it's an Orthodox church, but still uh, different from, um, you know, uh, although, to be honest with you, although I'm critical of dogmatic architecture, those old uh, uh, churches that I showed before with the darkness, you know, mysterious darkness, those Orthodox churches I love. Um, So New York City, he built not only the transportation hub, that one uh, that is so controversial, but also this Orthodox Church. He was also, I don't know if you know, Calatrava won the competition to build some kind of an eco lab, part of the largest Gothic cathedral, well, neo-Gothic cathedral in the world, that is St. John the Divine, also in New York City, but it was never built. He won the competition uh, for, uh, for that, that building. Eglise Nicola in Quebec. Uh, so St. Nicholas Church in Quebec. And not very impressive. In Mannheim, another uh, St. Nicholas Kirche or church. Again, before the Second World War. You know, about 100 years ago, modern, you know, uh, modernistic uh, church design, simple, austere. Now one in München. I do believe that in the in the design in the architecture of churches is true what. Uh, uh, Johann Huizinko said about culture, that in order to preserve culture, you have to create it. And it's the same with faith, I think. In order to preserve faith, you must create it. And in order to create it, you have to, you know, belong to your time. St. Nicholas uh, in Sellerfeld, um, I don't know what this is. Yeah, you know, another kind of, um, you know, Saxon, uh, modernism which attracts me in a way you know it's it's uh, sometimes it's severe but um, it, it has uh, it has uh, some interest here uh, or provoke some interest now here is the this is the building i wanted to arrive at mainly the church of saint nicholas in Hermans, switzerland this architect please remember this name because he did some he didn't build much because he gave up architecture to become a politician, which is not very common, but he did it, but he built some, uh, I only know two churches by him, which are, I would say formidable. And you'll see one of them now, built for St. Nicholas, so Walter Maria Förderer, Walter Maria Förderer, 
this is the building. And this was built in the 60s, I think. So, you know, about uh, 60 years ago, uh, concrete, uh, exposed concrete. <laughs> Pardon? I hear some. You want to say something? <laughs> anyway, let's look at this building because uh, I, I, I think this is not a banal building. Uh, the interior, I mean, you know, if something like this was built, let's say, at the end of the 20th century, when the constructivism or fragmentarism or, uh, um, you know, uh, fractal geometry affected architecture, we would have said, sure. But this was built 30 years earlier. And, um, of course, there was also uh, uh, Gottfried Böhm, who worked kind of in a similar way. He was not, you know, totally alone. But I think he did a good job in this uh, large church in Switzerland. And it's not domestic at all. It's not a sweet little church. I mean, we are so fond of the, the little chapels built by Peter Sunto. I am very sorry, you cannot compare those chapels with this building. And it's not just about the size. It's about the complexity and even the quality the, of, of, of you know, the, the, the whole conception. It's, it's a complex building. It's, it's, uh, and then you wonder why did he erode the geometry of the building in this way? Well, these erosions could be interpreted if, I, if we are to call them erosions. You know, it's, uh, it's maybe about uh, the, the humility, the, the modesty you are forced into when you, when, you, when you have faith, when you believe you cannot be arrogant in front of God. So, you know, or could be interpreted also faith as struggle, as, as longing, uh, as a, a desire for, 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 for uh, uh, it's not a certitude, it's more like an abysmal inquietude. It, it's interesting. I think it's an interesting building. Uh, look, at the look at the cross. There are actually, uh, you can read two or even three kind of crosses. So it's, it's a, a three-dimensional cross, which is, again, it's not, it's not presented as a certitude, more like a, some kind of a duality, facing two cardinal points. And uh, so the profile becomes the face and the face becomes the profile. It, make, it makes you think maybe in, in, in plastic arts of, of certain portraits by Picasso, where you know the face becomes profile and the profile becomes a face. It, it's you know again it's creativity. That's what it is. Now Manchester uh, United Kingdom. We are approaching the end. Uh, another church from Saint Nicholas. This one you know kind of Art Deco, uh, still modern. A modern church, massive like a fortress. Uh, let's imagine this uh, apsid is actually the sack, uh, or the bag with, filled with uh, incredible uh, uh, sweets and other beautiful things from St. Nicholas. Um, yeah, Manchester. Now, another one from UK. Uh, and UK has some, some beautiful churches, actually, uh, both uh, old and, and new. Maybe this one you would consider very, very beautiful, but I thought of showing it because uh, it is a little bit different from what we previously saw. Still modern. Berlin. Uh, I only have this picture, Freiburg, Katholische Kirche St. Nikolaus. The human beings did build, that's the truth. I think the saints cannot complain that we forgot them. No, no, no. Most saints received a lot of attention and uh, we just saw examples relating to St. Nicholas this time. Uh, Nicosia, an old building, uh, interesting.
Belgium can't can't this one I, I I chose to show because of the new intervention here, you know, which is uh, resolutely modern, and I'm glad it is. I yeah I have another picture here. I like the contrast, the dialectics between the old building and and the new. I think this is needed. You know, to show that we are not stuck in in, in some uh, remote or not so remote uh, remote uh, uh, past. So this is in Belgium, and I think the the new interventions are quite uh, legitimate and valid in the proximity of, of of the old building. Already in the dialectics between the two, I see the seed of life. Where is this? St. Nicholas Roman Catholic Church. This one almost looks like a building by a giant, if it's not by him. Uh, Blackwell Architect, I think this is the last image that I show tonight. Uh, it's a modern church, St. Nicholas Church in Marlon, Marlon Blackwell Architect. After lengthy search for property, the congregation of St. Nicholas Eastern Orthodox Church found a three acre site in Springdale, Arkansas, bordered to the east by a large public park and exposed to a major highway to the west. After a lengthy debate about the merits of the existing house and steel frame shop building, the decision was made to repurpose the shop building into a new worship space. The existing shop building has three high lift garage doors, a small mezzanine anyway, all this, uh, no, I'm not going to read this, too many, uh, uh, this is the building. And I like it, you know, it's, yes, it's, you know, it's simple modernism, rather minimalist, but uh, I think it has, uh, it has a role just as it is. And I like, uh, I like the, the use of color, and the, the, you know, the, the lighting uh, towards the evening and even during the day, I think it's, it's not bad. Modern, of course, a modern building for, uh, let's see, it's, it was, it is, a, it's an Eastern Orthodox Church. So it's possible. It's possible to build for the Eastern Orthodox Church in this way. Why is it that the, 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 the fathers of the church in our country do not get this? Maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know it's possible to build in this way as well. Yeah, this is in Arkansas, in the United States, but... It's not a bad building. It has a, a purity of design and intention and conception and... I, I, it is a church. It has dignity. Ah, here is another one. Ah, with this I end. It's actually not a church. It's a coal breaker. 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 I don't know what this is. Some. It, it's about uh, uh, you know uh, working with coal. It's called the Saint Nicholas Coal uh, Breaker in Maho. I, 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 the reason I, I included it here, although it's not a church, is because I like. I think the sacred manifests itself within the profane as well sometimes, and there is a. I mean, look at this. This is not a church. In a way, it's the very opposite of a church, but there is the unknown here for me as a you know. Uh, Man without the necessary knowledge, I'm impressed visually by what I see. And, and, and this is, a, you know, it's not God, you know, it's the opposite of God. It's not St. Nicholas, it's the opposite of St. Nicholas. But I can project my need for the otherness of religion in, into these relics, industrial relics. And this is a, you know, it, it's a ruin. It's an industrial ruin. But somehow the otherness of uh, what we call the above or the below or religion or spirit or the sacred could be seen here as well. 
that's I guess that's what I that's why I chose to. I was intrigued, and it is connected. I know now. I don't feel like going back to the text. It's called the Saint Nicholas. It's it's searching for Saint Nicholas. I came across this. I guess it says here the Saint Nicholas was constructed in 1930 on the site of the Saint Nicholas Colliery. I don't know what this is, which earned its name when it first opened on Christmas Day in 1861. So I guess that structure was torn down to make way for the new Saint Nick, which was the largest cold breaker in the world at the time, with 3,800 tons of steel and a mile and a half of, a, of conveyor lines. The monumental machine was capable of churning out 12,500 tons of coal in a single work day. So I told you there is something magical here, you know, in a in a mad way, in a way, you know, the, the human way. But um, anyway, look at this. I mean, is this less impressive than 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 a cathedral? Maybe not. You know, yes, it's very disordered, it's and abandoned, it's not used, but uh, it intrigues me, you know, it uh, stirs me up, my imagination. Actually, you know, uh, St. Nicholas uh, Church or Cathedral could be built here. Thank you. And happy birthday, St. Nicholas.